Hello and welcome back to the World Cup of Pokemon VGC Grand Finals, hosted by Victory Road, sponsored by Elgato, GG Saw, and Metaphy. Uh, my name is Jamie Boyd. I'm joined by Ben Kiriaku, and we are still going to continue with this fantastic Grand Finals we've had so far. It is currently 1-1 one and one between Canada and Thailand, and we'll be moving on to our third game here between William and Papa. Yeah, we're seeing this neck and neck battle between these two great nations battling with some fantastic BGC. Uh, two and one for round one, two and oh for round two in Canada and Thailand's favour, respectively. And and I'm really hoping that this carries on in this fashion and this goes absolutely down to the wire because we're seeing some absolutely fantastic VGC action. Uh, both players uh, that have been on the losing end of the stick uh, in the two matches that we've seen so far have still played fantastic VGC and really showcased why these two teams are in the grand finals of this tournament. So, uh, you know, whatever the result, both teams clearly very deserving of being here. And I'm looking forward to seeing what William and Papon have in store for us in the next match. Absolutely. One of them is going to be taking the lead once again for either of these teams. And personally, I am hoping very much for a back and forth. And when then we get to the game seven, uh, we are at 3-3 for a decider. Uh, but we will see if that is going to be the case. We're currently 1-1. Uh, we're going to be going forward with William versus Papon here. So you can see that William was representing Canada in the previous World Cup and is going to be representing them in the finals as well. Uh, Papon also responding in kind, uh, also representing Thailand in their previous uh, previous championship. Getting to the top eight there. And and now in the finals uh, for Thailand this time. Indeed, and uh, a little bit more stats from the background here. Uh, Papon with a 4-2 and two record, doing very, very well so far for Thailand uh, in the World Cup 2022. 2021, he had a 3-3 free, free record, so already improving on the record from the previous years, getting at least one more win, maybe two at the end of this match, we'll have to see. I've been playing since VGC 2015, uh, so a seasoned player. Uh, unlike William, who's been playing since 2020, so a little bit newer to the scene, um, but no less uh, no less deserving to be there representing uh representing Canada in this grand finals. William is at a 3-4 record, has got positive uh, positive game records, 10 and 9, uh, but unfortunately ha is one set down in match. So uh, if you're William, you definitely want to be winning this game, uh, both for your team, but also to get that 4-4 four and four record and e be ending the tournament neutral. Yeah, absolutely. Is that that's what you want to be going for here? And Zashian Evolutal is going to be the duo of choice coming out for William's side of the field. Uh, it does seem like a team that did uh, pop up right at the beginning of the the format. So I do remember seeing those uh, the Pokemon paired together uh, previously. I do remember Gastron over the Rillaboom, but Rotom Heat and Landorus have been a very common pairing with Evolutal as well. Uh, should be very impactful into going to be this Runya Sun. We only have to be seeing those six Pokemon on the screen together uh, for at least a few a few more games and then we are done with it but we are going to be sitting through it once again here comes the Rinya Sun coming out for, from uh, coming out for Papon here on the other hand I'm looking forward to seeing Rinya Sun uh, coming out onto the field <laughs> uh, especially uh, Papon being a player that's used Rinya Sun quite a lot in the format uh, in general uh, as well as in the uh, in this tournament uh, both of these players have actually used these uh, these six Pokemon before in previous matches so they look both scouted for what uh, what their opponent has used previously and will have found uh, that they uh, they both have used these teams before. So it'd be interesting. Uh, we're, we're almost kind of going into maybe like a little bit of a game two kind of situation here um, where, you know, each player may be playing like they know some of the, uh, some of the choices that each one has made uh, in their team building process because they've both used them before and successfully, I might add as well. Uh, Papon used Rinya Sun twice already so far and uh, is undefeated with it uh, in in games and matches uh, where uh, William did also win with the same composition only once, but two and one. Yeah, so both players are going for a little bit more of comfort picks going into this grand finals. So uh, we can jump into the game here. Here comes the Landorus and Rotom that is so effective against all variations of Sun we've seen throughout all of the series. I'm sure it will be no change here, uh, but it is going to be facing down against the Grimmsnarl and Zashian coming out for uh, for Papon's side of the field. Yeah, I'm interested to see you know how how each player reacts to this position, right? Because you know if it's if it's the same as before where. 
uh, you know, you've seen uh, things like Trick coming out onto the field. A Trick's going to be pretty effective, I think, against that Rotom uh, and equally Landorus. Um, so you know, it really comes down to what Pokemon uh, that Papon has brought to uh, this match as to you know, which Pokemon that you want to be speed controlling on William's side of the field. And if you're William, you know, you've got some switches out here. You've got the Zacian to take stuff like tricks. You've got um, you've got the Eveltal that's immune to it. You've got Reggie Lecky that also wants, you know, any speed control from Papon has been uh, removed, is going to be faster than that Zacian. So there's a lot of factors here going on, uh, but just a little bit of a defensive start here from Papon. Astro Reflect coming out from the Grim Smell, going to be reducing the damage coming out from the Landorus, and not going for any of the Dynamaxes. Landorus and Rotom do very much want to Dynamax against the opposing Zacian, but not this turn, it seems. Uh, is this going to be an overheat coming out from the Rotom into the opposing Zacian? Not Ooh. able to pick up the KO on that Zacian. It did manage to get some really good damage into the opposing Landorus with that Behemoth Blade, uh, but Landorus is able to survive that and go for the Earthquake here. Immune to that Earthquake on the Rotom side of the field, thanks to that Levitate. Going to easily pick up that last little bit of damage on the opposing Zashian there and do some nice damage to the opposing Grimmsnarl as well. So maybe a light screen uh, could have saved that Zashian, but at the same time, the Earthquake would have then done a lot of damage as well. So given the fact that both of the Pokemon did attack and Zashian did attack as well, uh, that meant Zashian was going to be KO'd that turn. Mm, I kind of wonder, you know, with the Intimidate, unlikely that the Landorus would have been knocked out at all by uh, the Zashian in that turn. So it was quite a nice... Uh, target from William to knock out Papon's Zacian on turn one. A kind of a little bit of foreshadowing maybe that the uh, the Eveltal is the Pokemon of choice in the background for William. Um, and that's something that Papon's going to have to maybe think about, uh, you know, how they how they really navigate uh, around a potential uh, Eveltal in the background now that the Zacian has been knocked out. You know, there's a lot of a lot of weight to be put on uh, Grouded shoulders here. Uh, Max Rockfall is one of the options that's certainly available to pop on uh, most likely, and uh, that's going to have to do a lot of work in this uh, in this mid game. It's very much down to this Groudon to be able to take on William's side of the field at this point. It is going to be Dynamaxing. Uh, won't be taking much damage at all from the opposing Landorus, thanks to that Reflect that's been set up. Uh, we can assume that a Light Screen may be set up as well from the Grimmsnarl as well to take on the Rotom. Uh, but it doesn't need to be going for any of those overheats, especially because it's minus two here. It does have access to Willowis, and it does outspeed the opposing Groudon as well. So that's really, really going to neuter the damage output. Wow. Coming out from that crowd, and look at that—that's only about a third of the damage done to the opposing Rotom uh, with that Max Rockfall. Not doing much damage at all. A really, really impactful Willowisp, and a U-turn coming out from the Landorus as well. It's very interesting to see that move after both the um, the Rotom and the Groudon there. So a very, very slow Landorus. It's carrying the U-turn as well, so it uh, could be carrying something like that Assault Vest, where you do prioritize a lot of bulk, and then you do have space for U-turn as well. Yeah, certainly, and you know it. It really probably is trained quite a lot in uh, in bulk to be able to uh, survive the big attacks that could come out from Papon's side of the field, and that's going to shift the uh, game really in William's favour, I think, as, as far as the matchup goes. Foul play, finishing off the turn with a big hit into the Rillaboom, doing uh, well, combined with the Sand, a bit over 50%, and not going to be enough to pick up the 2KO a two hit KO potentially, uh, depending on how the damage rolls work uh, with that grassy terrain recovery, of course. Um, and yeah, but that Rillaboom is now going to be putting a lot of pressure onto the ground and on uh, Papon's side of the field. Yeah, it really is. It can go for the Dynamax if it wants to be able to do some massive damage with the drum solo. Grassy Glides won't be doing as much damage thanks to that Reflect that was set up, but. Groudon's really not doing too much damage at this point. You saw how little damage it did to the opposing Rotom uh, when it did get burned. So that was going to be the main source of damage that when the Zashin was taken care of so quickly in that first turn. Uh, but with the Intimidate coming back in for the, the, the Landorus, uh, switching in for that Rillaboom, going to intimidate that Groudon even further. So its damage output is going to be reduced significantly once again. So it's really not going to be able to do the damage it needs. Well, at least it's going to avoid the Grimmsnarl for, on Papon's side of the field. That is something uh, coming out for them. But uh, 
Max Flare firing up into the opposing lounge. It had taken a lot of damage previously from that Behemoth Blade, and that is a critical hit, Max Flare, coming out from the Groudon. Uh, probably necessary given the fact that the Groudon was burned and it just be had been intimidated as well. Unfortunately, the Landris does get a critical hit there, or takes a critical hit and does end up being KO'd. And yeah, the safety goggles was not on that Rotom. We saw that previously from the Sand Pick hitting that Rotom, so Citrus Berry is usually the other item of choice there. A very, very nice item choice here, given that you are facing Sun and not a Venusaur. So Citrus Berry going to be a much more impactful than the safety goggles would have been. It really will be, and uh, that's a great item choice there for uh, William to be using. Likely uh, knew that Rinius was a good option for Papon to be uh, using, and using a composition themselves that in turn is pretty effective here. There's Nation coming out here into the field and are likely going to be doing quite a bit of work here. Uh, the Grimmsnarl hasn't shown off any of its speed control options yet, so maybe doesn't have the opportunity to be able to, to put any speed control onto the Zacian uh, if it doesn't have anything like Thunder Wave or Scary Face. Um, but with the with the Groudon being burnt and also at uh, one stage of decreased uh, attack from the Landra switch in on the previous turn, Zacian doesn't really mind if you know there's any speed control options coming out. Can really safely just target into the uh, Grimmsnarl or the Groudon um, and sort of feel pretty comfortable about its position, I think. Yeah, it could have taken that Thunder Wave that is the speed control move of choice from the Grimmsnarl, but the Zashin did protect itself. Rotom not caring about the minus two it took previously from that overheat. In the sun, that's still doing so much damage to that opposing Grimmsnarl. Uh, brings it just under 25% there, so it should be in range of any of the other attacks it would want to go for. Max Quake was fired off into this Zashin, so a really, really impactful protector. Dodging the Thunder Wave that came came out from the Grimmsnarl, dodging the full damage coming out from the opposing Max Quake as well, really not doing too much damage at all uh, into that Zashian. So it might even get close, yeah, very close to recovering back to full HP thanks to that Grassy Terrain that's still on the field. Yeah, and I'm kind of sitting here wondering what the last Pokemon is for William on uh, in, in this game. We've seen the Rotom, we've seen the, uh, the... Oh no, we've seen all four Pokemon. Apologies, I think there was another Pokemon yet on the field, but it is that Zacian is the last one. So yeah, Zacian's going to be... Um, you know, now now that Groudon is uh, coming out of its max turn, the nice protect there, um, Zacian's going to be even safer this turn uh, to survive things like Precipice Blades or Fire Punches or Heat Crashes that are coming out from the uh, Groudon in this turn. There is a Rillaboom switching in the back for the Rotom to reset the uh, reset the special attack drops coming out here that William may be opting to go for. In the meantime, Papa's going to find a way to, uh, you know, get a little bit more damage on the field. There is one Pokemon left that Papon hasn't yet to reveal, and uh, that Charizard would be a good option. But if it, it hasn't come out already so far, um, you know, it would be something nice to reveal at this stage, especially with the Thunder Wave coming out onto that Zacian. It does connect and uh, he's going to be reducing the speed of the Zashin. That means the Groudon can fire off the Fire Punch first. Uh, but not doing too much damage really to the opposing Rillaboom as well. But the, all the damage reduction just really coming into play and not doing too much damage at all. Behemoth Blade does break through the Paralysis and knock out that opposing Grimmsnarl. So we are going to be seeing uh, the final Pokemon on Papon's side of the field uh, that hasn't been revealed yet. Uh, we do get to reset the, all the special, defense, uh, special attack drops from the Rotom as well now that that switched out. Uh, the Rillaboom has taken a lot of damage, so probably not going to be the Pokemon of choice to go for that Dynamax. Almost certainly going to be that Rotom now that it has reset the special attack drops as well. And Incineroar is going to be the Pokemon of choice coming out for Papon. Yeah, interesting because, again, you know, the, the Dynamax has been held by uh, you know, William for so long um, and been able to, to keep it in a really comfortable position because of all of the work that that Rotom did in the early game. Uh, now, you know, even with the Incineroar coming in, uh, very, very good against the uh, against the Zacian. We have seen in the background that it is carrying that Focus Sash, so it could be quite fast. And if it's trained fast enough, may be able to outspeed that Zacian and knock it out, depending on how William has trained it before it's able to move. So you know, the damage that we're looking for could be within that Incineroar now, and it could be a way for Papon to carve a carve a way back into this game yeah, that's got to be the damage potential uh, at this point the groudon really didn't do it when it got burned and then got intimidated as well 
uh, so wasn't able to make the most of its Dynamax turns. You've got to rely on this Incineroar already at this point. Uh, but Fake Out is coming up from the Rillaboom first, so they're going to be able to make that Incineroar flinch there. And then Fire Punch is going to be launched off by that Groudon, but because of that previous Grassy Terrain cover, it's not enough. The Rillaboom does survive, but at least for Papon's side of the field, the Zashin does get fully paralyzed this turn. It does, and uh, yeah, that's going to be quite a nice uh, little turn there for Papon. One of the ways, one of the other ways, I suppose, that, that Papon has uh, in their favour to get back into the game is for the Zacian to never move again um, with that paralysis. And uh, you know, Papon's definitely going to have to take advantage of that. I believe we didn't see the Zacian uh, try to act after the. Uh, Incineroar, but the Incineroar could have gone for a fake out in that turn. So not necessarily an indication that the Incineroar is faster uh, than the Zacian on Williams' side of the field, but certainly could be. And uh, if it is, then I think Papon's looking actually like they're in quite a strong position here. They do outspeed the Zacian with the Incineroar. The sun is still up, so that would almost certainly be able to pick up a KO. So it, it may come down to that. If the Incineroar is able to move first before the Zashin, that would be impactful. Uh, if it gets fully paralyzed and still outspeeds, then uh, that would also be pretty impactful as well. So that could be a crucial factor going into the final bit of this endgame. And yes, that is a very speedy Incineroar. It is going to be outspeeding both the Groudon and the Paralyzed Zashin in the sun. That is able to easily pick up the KO on that opposing uh, Zashian there. So it's going to take a lot of recoil and the so Groudon outspeeds the opposing Rillaboom as well. The Grassy Train did disappear, so there was no more Grassy Terrain priority to give that, that Grassy Glide. Uh, that is a double KO here, so it is going to be down to the Rotom, but still does have access to Dynamax, uh, at least, uh, but it is going to be down to that to be able to take this game. Yeah, the Rotom's already taken quite a bit of damage already. Um, it's not the bulkiest Pokemon that exists in uh, VGC these days. Uh, there's certainly been a power creep over the years since Rotom was introduced into the game. Um, but I, I think one of the things that's going to be uh, quite interesting about how this plays out is this Rotom, uh, after it Dynamaxes, if it's not able to pick up the KOs that it needs, uh, it is going to have to lower its special attack in the end games uh, to be able to uh, you know, do damage to this ground and effectively because of that ground typing. So going for the Dynamax here, uh, going to be launching out some big damage, uh, going to be setting up the sun as well for itself. So that's going to be pretty useful in being able to deal damage. But looks like Incineroar is really, really fast here, naturally outspeeding the uh, Rotom without any boost whatsoever. Mac Lightning coming in for Rotom, targeting down that Incineroar, doing quite a lot of damage, but not enough to pick up the KO. And it is the Rock Tomb as the move of choice on this Groudon. So making sure now, I think that the Rotom is almost certainly going to be uh, less, uh, it's going to be slower than the Groudon and allowing both of Papon's Pokemon to be going first in this turn. Yeah, absolutely. It's very interesting to see this this Groudon just being uh, able to be still pretty useful as well, uh, given the fact that it wasn't doing enough damage at all. It's slowly just chipping away everything. It was allowed to go for so many fire punches into the Rillaboom, and now it's just being chipping away at this Rotom with the Rock Tombs as well. Max Flare is going to be able to pick up the KO on the opposing Incineroar, so a very smart move choice there rather than going for the Lightning, because you do need that Sun Boost to try and break through this Groudon. But uh, can it even? It's got at least a special defense boost from a previous Max Quake. It's almost certainly carrying the Assault Vest as well, given the moves it's been going for, so... Uh, I don't think even uh, the Rotom would be able to break through this Groudon. It's taking so much damage as well. Just two more Rock Tombs should do it, uh, especially yeah. because the last the last one will hit it when it's not in Dynamax anymore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Its HP is going to be cut in half when it goes back into its normal form. So it's all down to this. It's all down to this overheat as to whether it can knock out the Groudon from here. Max Flare coming out into the Groudon after that Rock Tomb does not pick up the KO there and not even close that Groudon hangs on with so much health left and Rotom goes back into its normal form and the question here is what move do you use as the Groudon because there's got to be an accurate move on there somewhere you don't want to be missing a rock tomb at this stage of the tournament you've fought so hard to get back into the game and it is tap on with a critical hit unlikely that that mattered too much uh, that the Rotom is going to be going down and Papon is going to take the victory there for Thailand. And I think if you ask me in turn two, turn three, uh, whether Papon would be winning that game, I'd be saying uh, no. Yeah, <laughs> but I, it I, I, 
I was absolutely also very skeptical as soon as the Groudon got a uh, burn there. Uh, we can't, don't have, uh, can't forget that the Landorus did take a critical hit fire punch if it would have been able to avoid yep. that critical hit. Yep. You get to keep your Landorus and do some extra stuff, or even just extra damage as well as Intimidate in the future. Uh, but the key thing there was the Speedy Incineroar. I don't think yep. there was any chance back into the game for Papa, maybe for some full of paralysis. Uh, but the Speedy Incineroar was very impactful there because it was yeah, able yeah. to outspeed the Paralyzed Zacian and then be able to pick up that one hit KO. So... Uh, a very, very smart choice there for the Incineroar to be able to uh, essentially save the game uh, to be able to take care of the Zashin before it got any attacks off. If it got a Behemoth Blade into the opposing Groudon, that would probably put it in range of that yep. uh, Sun Boosted Max yep. player. If it got a Sacred Sword into the Incineroar, that is an extra turn that the Rotom could have been going for the Groudon as well, which would have been able to uh, KO. And so it did get fully paralyzed on one of those turns as well. So uh, a little bit of misfortune as well that we can't forget uh, coming out, uh, but just a very, very nice choice of the Speedy Incineroar coming up for Papon. Definitely. And I think there was one turn where there could have been a grassy gro grassy glide coming out from the Rillaboom that could have targeted down uh, into the Groudon. I believe the turn that Zacian was knocked out. I uh, would have to watch it back after the uh, after the finals have concluded just to have a look and see if that last bit of damage might have swung the game uh, in uh, in William's favour. But as it stands, on the Zero YouTube channel, of course, is where you catch it. Absolutely, again. on the YouTube channel. Shameless plug there, 100%. Um, but of course, you know, going into game two, there's going to be, uh, there's going to have to be some ad uh, adjustments here because I, I think that incineral set really does change how this matchup goes. Yeah, it really does. It's still going to be Rotom and the Lanyrus here. Ah, oh, but there we go. The classic lead of Series 12. There is the Grim Snuff Charizard coming out for Pap on side of the field. They're very much picking up in popularity as we got closer and closer to the World Championships. We'll have to see if the Charizard is going to be following that trend of the weakness policy that did pick up a lot. Uh, as we approach the World Championships, uh, going to be able to take on the attacks a lot better uh, coming out from the opposing team and then respond back with the boosted attacks. So uh, that is very much the potential that could come out from this Charizard. There's super effective hits from the Rotom going for the Thunderbolt, so the rock type moves coming out from the Landorus as well. Uh, you've got the screens on the Grimstar that would be able to allow that Charizard to survive any of those attacks. Uh, so we'll have to see if that is going to be the choice here because it is at least going to be a Dynamax or Gigantamax assumedly coming out from Papon's side of the field with their Charizard to kick us off. Yeah, and it, you know, it does depend on that weakness policy versus uh, something like a Life Orb um, versus uh, Lumberries versus, you know, any other any other sort of of the common items that Charizard tend to run is going to make a massive difference in this turn. We're also going to see a Dynamax coming out from William's side of the field turn one rather than turn eight or nine, I think it was in the last game. So uh, both trainers going on the offensive in the early game. It's going to be that Landorus as well. And if it is as bulky as we suspected, from the previous game, then it's definitely going to be taking anything that this Charizard wants to be throwing out at it with ease. Reflect coming out from the Grimmsnarl are going to stop the Landorus doing as much damage. And it is that Airstream as the move of choice. So, wow, look at that. Uh, that. That Landorus took absolutely nothing from that Max Airstream coming out there. Clearly trained to be very, very defensive as a Thunderbolt does respectable damage into that Gigantamax Charizard. It's going to be proccing the weakness policy and crucially after it's been attacked. Uh, so isn't going to be getting the benefit of that until next turn as the Max Airstream comes out from the Landorus. Doesn't knock out the Charizard though. So it uh, could have been a missed opportunity to use a, uh, a move of the rock typing to be able to knock out that Charizard in one and uh, uh, and knock it out this turn because now there's no speed control on William's side of the field and that Charizard is looking pretty threatening. Yeah, and as soon as you switch in your Groudon, you get the solar power boost as well as the uh, extra boost from the sun on your wildfire. So uh, even the Rotom would be able to survive that attack if, even if it's a wildfire going into the resisted hits. Uh, and now you've got your airstream as well first. You saw you were faster. And this should be doing a bit more damage than it did previously. But that Landorus is still oh so bulky. Even oh in the God. sun, even at plus two. It's able to shrug off that attack and survive. The Thunderbolt gets to finish off the Charizard here. So that means the Landorus is hitting a max move into the switched in Groudon. 
That is just the benefit of running assumedly so much bulk on this Landorus because we saw how slow it was. It had to go somewhere with the EVs and it looks like it is going to be in bulk there. And now you get to get the speed control in your favor because there's no more S-Trains coming out from the Charizard. Groudon didn't get an S-Train boost. Uh, so you are going to be outspeeding here. And Landorus was even bulky enough to survive the round of Wildfire Chip as well. I mean, just, what is this Landorus? Like, like <laughs> is this Landorus even allowed in, in VGC? I mean, this is just like... How, how well uh, William has prepared for the Rinya Sun matchup, clearly, because even that 2 plus Charizard in the Sun with its solar power boost wasn't enough to, 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 to knock it out, even with the residual damage and some. Uh, and the previous attack, the Max Airstream before it. So, yeah, really well trained Ladderus here. Absolutely fantastic coming out from William and really is. Uh, taking a commanding position here. Uh, Papon now doesn't have Dynamax to fall back on. Uh, the Rotom nor the Landorus can be speed controlled by the Grim Snarl if Thunder Wave is the only move of speed control that it has access to, uh, given the ground and electric typing on William's side of the field. And so uh, now that Will Will-O-Wisp that was so useful in game one is going to be able to be uh, utilized by the uh, Rotom. And, you know, Landorus can start stacking up even more airstream boosts or get some quakes going. Yeah, absolutely. At least you get to intimidate the Landorus so it won't be doing as much damage. And you can go for whichever screen of choice you want with the Grim Snarl. We've already got the Reflect, so we're going to be seeing the light screen as well. Uh, so it is going to be reducing the damage output from that opposing Rotom as well. Willow is not going to be very useful against this fire type Incineroar that did switch in for the Groudon. Uh, but you get to follow up with a Max Quake as well. And that covered the Incineroar switch in very nicely. It's still going to do over half damage to this Incineroar, even with that Intimidate. It is, and uh, you know, the special defense boost won't be particularly impactful uh, in the rest of the game, but that damage on the Incineroar certainly will be, especially with how fast it is. Uh, interested to see actually if the Eveltal is the Pokemon of choice that William has brought in the back. Now that we've seen foul play from game one coming out from Papon's team, uh, because you know, one of the things that you uh, you know you're a little bit scared of maybe if you're William in this matchup is whether or not uh you know that's a spirit break there on the grim snarl and you're going to kind of struggle to knock out the grim snarl um so maybe there's a, a little bit of a a uh, eventual waiting in the wings here we'll have to see as rillaboom does land onto the field yeah it does and we've already seen that it's a speedy incineral we didn't get to see or at least to confirm if it was a fake out coming out uh, on that turn from the Incineroar, but Incineroar is going for a fake out first, at least on this turn, and it was fake out from the Rillaboom, so the Incineroar does outspeed the opposing Rillaboom. It looks like it was going for an offensive attack on that <laughs> first uh, in that first game. Uh, that means that that's a pretty much wasted move coming out from William's side of the field, uh, because <laughs> that Thunder Wave is able to hit into the Rillaboom, uh, but the Rotom was flinched here before the Rillaboom could fake out the Incineroar. Indeed, and now that Rillaboom is going to be really quite scared of what can be coming out from this Incineroar. Uh, the Rotom has the benefit of the speed control that has been uh, set up by the Landorus in previous turns. And, you know, I think it's eventually going to be able to uh, make its way through uh, the Incineroar itself. It's going to do some respectable damage to the Landorus, uh, sorry, the Groudon in the back, back for Papon, especially since there's no Max Quake boosts on Papon's side of the field in this on this occasion and sun's still on the field um so yeah the rotom's looking pretty scary right now it really will come down to uh, you know what the last pokemon are for both of these uh, for for william's side of the field as to what papon needs to preserve on their side of the field yeah preserving the incineroar does make a lot of sense because you've got to assume that there is that attachment waiting in the back and if you can just land a Thunder Wave onto it, then your Incineroar can very much be the Zashian answer. A Rillaboom does carry Protect here. Of course, that Assault Vest is definitely on that Landorus, so uh, the Rillaboom does have space for the Protect, as it is yeah. going to be carrying a different item here. And very impactful Protect there. Uh, not getting any mileage out of any of the attacks that Papon was uh, going for there. Uh, but the Wild Wildfire is still slowly chipping away at that opposing Rillaboom. At least it gets to recover back with the Grassy Terrain, though. And the question here as well is, is you know, where... How many times can Papon get the switch correct? Uh, because, you know, the, the Rotom can now go for, say, a Thunderbolt into the Growlin slot. Uh, if that switches out into the Incineroar, Incineroar is going to be taking a lot of damage. Uh, Papon doesn't want that, right? And so, you know, does, does Papon just decide to stand their ground, uh, keep the Growlin in and go for that Fire-type move on the Rillaboom? Uh, does the Rillaboom get through the full Paralysis? 
potential and get that grassy glide onto the ground. And as we're seeing right now, just to cover that switch uh, into the potential Incineroar. Uh, Willow Esp, though, following up into the Grip Snarl and stopping that foul play from doing nearly as much damage. Yeah, it's not going to be doing really much damage at all here. Uh, but that spur did not hit the opposing Groudon, and it's not able to pick up the KO onto that opposing Rillaboom. Uh, that would have just been a tiny bit of extra chip damage onto the Rotom. Uh, very negligible damage here, but at least the Rillaboom was able to survive that attack. Uh, that means that you get a, a tiny bit of HP on the Rotom, because Foul Play was able to pick up the knockout on the opposing Rillaboom. But breaking through and getting that much damage into the opposing Groudon is going to be very impactful here, because that's got to be in range of the, either the Overheat or the Behemoth Blade now. It certainly has, and uh, yeah, now really interested to see what the last Pokemon is. The Zacian coming out onto the field. So uh, Zacian going to feel a little bit better about its position in this game because there isn't sun on the field, and that means that the uh, the Incineroar in the back won't be able to probably knock it out in one. Uh, but you know, you've got to get it into a position where the Incineroar is on the field. Uh, the Zacian is paralysed uh, by the Grim Snarl. And also there's Sun on the field for Papon to, uh, you know, be, be feeling really good about their position. You've got to do that in front of a Rotom launching out attacks, uh, especially since this Groudon isn't able to protect because of this the Assault Vest. And there's, there's definitely some advantage to be taken from William here and catching all of these switch-ins. Yeah, absolutely. And it's another switch-in, of course, you always want to be intimidating a Zacian. Uh, with your Incineroar that is waiting in the back there. Thunder Wave is going to connect with this Ashian, so now it's going to be slower than both the Groudon and the Incineroar that's just switched in. So uh, the Willow Wisp is going to connect once again with a Fire-type Incineroar switching in. Twice it's tried to connect with the Groudon, and twice it has failed to do so because of the switch in. But Hemo Blades does fire off into the opposing Incineroar, and that's not going to be enough. If that was a Sacred Sword, that would have done enough, but uh, Incineroar able to survive here, and we've seen how speedy it is. That can just outspeed the opposing Ashian. That means you can just switch in the ground on now to get the sun back up yeah but i do like this position here for uh william quite a lot because that behemoth blade probably did enough to bring the incineral into range of a thunderbolt potentially we saw the uh, max lightning in game one did near enough not quite double but just you know quite a bit more than or a little bit more than what incineral has left and so you know, if you, you kind of work that back, Incineroar might be in range of uh, another attack from the Rotom, and certainly the follow-up from the Zacian as well. Um, I think with the Burnt Grimmsnarl on the field now, uh, and the Incineroar having taken so much damage, it's got to take recoil to be able to knock out the Zacian, and so uh, as far as end games go, you know, you're setting up, if you're Papon, you're setting up the Sun for the Overheat to try to knock out the, um, the Groudon in the back, and the question is, is ooh, whether that Incineroar survives or not, and it just hangs on. It does, and that means it's able to fire off that Flare Blitz, and it does not KO the opposing Zacian. It's going to KO itself to the recoil, uh, but that is not enough to pick up the KO. Uh, Behemoth Blade is going to be able to be fired off into this opposing Grim Snarl. Uh, that's going to be doing some massive damage. Uh, the Grim Snarl was reduced to going for foul plays here, uh, but it can no, no longer go for that. It is going to be KO'd here, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think I, we saw the Incineroar outspeed the Rotom in the previous game, right? And the Rotom just outsped the Incineroar here, so that yes. might be the speed tie between the Rotom and the Incineroar. No, it's the uh, Max Airstreams from uh, Roy, Roy ah, Roy yes, the getting the uh, speed So speed long speed. ago, so long yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, but it's managed, to, it's managed to hold on the Rotom, and the Rotom hasn't had to, you know, do anything, it's just sat there and and uh you know kept it boosts and kept uh kept the advantage on the field so rotom doing loads of work in this game yeah absolutely and it just really needs to connect with an overheat at this point uh, that's just got to be in range now that the sun's been set back up again and even if it doesn't you've got a, a chance to be able to connect with the behemoth blade as well uh, but there is the overheat it does outspeed the opposing ground on and connects but not enough to pick up the ko it's got to have at least one more attack coming out from winnie on the side of the field uh, Rock Tomb is connecting with the opposing Rotom. Uh, that is not quite going to two shots, given the fact that the Rotom is holding that Citrus Berry. It would have done if it wasn't carrying that item, but that is going to be uh, two more Rock Tombs necessary to KO that Rotom. That's going to be two t opportunities for the Overheat, assuming the Exacian gets fully paralyzed forever, but it is not going to be. It is going to launch that Behemoth Blade into that Groudon and take us into the Game 3. It is indeed another Game 3 of this Grand Finals. And we're going to see whether Papon or William will be taking match point for their team there. 
Uh, such close games. So so well played on both sides. Really interesting adjustments. And I just, you know, I, I think we just need to take a moment to talk about that Landorus because, oh my God, I, that that was just insane, the amount of damage that it managed to take from that Charizard. Yeah, like activated weakness policy Charizard in the sun is the strongest attack we have in the metagame, and it shrugged it off. It even survived the extra damage from the uh, wildfire afterwards, and it had taken a little bit of chip previously as well, so uh, yeah. from that airstream. So just a crazy, crazy bulky Landorus coming out here and able to survive that uh, so powerful attack that KOs pretty much every single other Pokemon in the game, and then able to survive and get off some more max moves. So yeah, really, really nice coming out from the Landorus. We haven't seen Assault Vest on it for quite a while. It does tend to be just run pretty fast to outspeed the Zashians, and then it just goes for an offensive item like a White Herb or a Life Orb or a Lamberry or something like that. I Assault Vest very much dropped off because you tend to run much more bulk, but then you don't have to be Zashian plus one, but... That is the impact that the Assault Vest can give you. It, exactly, and it, it, it made such a difference. It allowed that Rotom to stay on the field right to the end game, um, which allowed the Rotom to do just enough to make sure that that Incineroar was kept in check so the Zacian was able to knock out the Grim Snarl. And, you know, all of these things snowballed towards the final position. Going into game three now, the Rotom and the Landorus are the Pokemon of choice, keeping it exactly the same and no surprises whatsoever to see from William, especially with how well they did in game two. Incineroar and Gastrodon coming out onto the field for Papon, so a real adjustment here. Um, no Grimmsnarl in the lead, uh, no Charizard, no Groudon, uh, just a couple of Pokemon that want to, I think, probably aim to put as much pressure on that Landorus as possible. It's not Lumbar or anything like that, so you can just put it to sleep with any of the yawns that the Gastron will go, want to go for. And it won't be doing as much damage because it has taken that Intimidate as well. Rillaboom needs to be the answer to that opposing Gastron. That might be why it's switching in for the Rotom this turn. Uh, but yeah, really, really nice adjustment coming out. A bit more passive coming out from Papon's side of the field. But there's nothing really stopping this Gastron this turn from going for a yawn. Uh, and Cineroar even outspeeds the opposing Landorus here. <laughs> it's so, so speedy. And the Landorus is so bulky. You don't see that every day. Uh, but the Pine Shot went into what was the Rotom. Uh, and it's going to hit the Rillaboom. So now it won't be doing as much damage with the Grassy Glide into the opposing Gastron. And in comes the Charizard against the Rillaboom. That is the position that you want to be in. Uh, if you can just take care of that Rillaboom, the Gastron is going to look really, really strong. Just a U-turn coming out from the opposing Landorus, so it won't be a target of any kind of yawns or even an ice beam uh, coming into it this turn. And to be able to pivot out into one of the Pokemon waiting in the back, you would assume that Zashian was brought to this game once again. We've already seen the Rotom. It is going to be the Zashian joining the field, so it can put pressure onto the Charizard. Should it go for that Dynamax, it would still be able to do some massive damage. Uh, but the Gastron has yet to move this turn. It is going to be doing what it loves to do. It is going for a yawn into what was the Landorus and is now the Zashian. So a really, really strong position for Papon now, because if the Zashian stays in, it goes to sleep. And if it switches out, Charizard can do whatever it wants, because it's only facing down the Rillaboom. Exactly, and yeah, so many things happened that game. So much, uh, so much variation in the board state. We we went from something really quite passive on Papon side of the field to something quite aggressive, uh, and and equally with William, you know, some some quite aggressive leads for what Papon could have been uh, bringing in the leads, but just adjusted to something uh, that's that's good for what Papon brought in turn one. But actually, turns out that it's certainly under pressure in turn two so uh, the Zacian coming out here going to be into the Rotom and we saw a sneak peek of what was input in the Charizard and it looks like that Rotom is not going to be very happy with the outcome of this turn does not seem so. At least there's some solace that the Groudon did not switch in, so uh, the attack that this uh, Charizard will want to be going for is not solar power boosted at least, uh, but it is going for its Gigantamax. It was completely free to do so. If the Zashin stayed in, it would do some good damage, but then it would go to sleep at the end of this turn, and you get to cover for that very nicely if it switches out here as well. Rillaboom going for the Protect here, doesn't want to take any of the stab type attacks coming out from the Charizard, and Gastron also following suit, did not want to take the Grassy Glide from the Rillaboom, but here comes the Charizard. A very, a very nice play coming out from the Charizard. Max Rockfall into what was the Zashin. Now a Rotom doing some very, very nice damage into that Rotom. Bring it just under half so the Citrus Berry will activate. Uh, it will take around a Sandstorm as well, so that might tip it over the edge, even though it's gonna yeah. munch on the Citrus yeah, Berry yeah. here. That might put it into range of a second Rockfall. 
Yeah, because I think, you know, the thing that these players are going to be looking for in the future is um, from Papon's side, uh, the Rotom knocked out and probably the Rillaboom knocked out. I think that's going to be the, the real key because uh, that that Landorus on William's side of the field is going to be so, so effective at dealing with the um, uh, with the Charizard, as we've seen, uh, with the Incineroar and, and Groudon in many respects. Uh, but it's not so good at dealing with the Gastrodon because uh, all of that all of that bulk that it had to invest in has to come from somewhere that's clearly from speed because we saw the interaction with Incineroar but also from its attack and that means that it's going to be very difficult for William to be able to break through this Gastrodon if uh, you know there's some reflex going on onto the field if there's some intimidates on the um, onto uh, the Landorus as well so William's looking for the knockout on the Gastrodon. Uh, Papon's kind of looking for the knockout on uh, anything that makes the Gastrodon's life quite difficult so that that Landorus is really manageable for him. Yeah, absolutely. And the Rotom here, not wanting to take another Rock Ball, is switching out into that Zacian. Uh, very free to do so now that there's no threats of the Yawn, especially because the Gastrodon is switching out into that opposing Incineroar. Did not want to take any of the Grass-type moves that could have come out from that opposing Rillaboom. Uh, crucially, the Rillaboom has not switched out this turn. It's just going to go for a Fake Out here. Um, could potentially have been a timeout there. Um, so having Fake Out in the top slot, which you should absolutely never do. Don't do that. That's the reason why you do not do that. Uh, because now it is going to be KO'd by this G Max Wildfire. And yeah, that's, that's the Gastrodon counter taken care of. So how's William, William going to break through that Gastrodon in the future now? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I've got a bit of a confess confession to make, Jamie. Uh, I know I you have it in the top slot as well. I you're run wrong. it in the top you slot. You have just been shown why you're wrong. I have been doing that for 11 years and I will not stop <laughs> now. I know I'm wrong, but this is exactly, you are absolutely right, this is why it's wrong, but I'm still going to do it, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, that really unfortunate there for, for William, um, especially if that was a timeout there, you know, not, not the way that you want to uh, go into game three, but you know, there hasn't been Dynamax committed by William at all at this stage of the, of the game, and so um, you know, there is an opportunity here for William to bring it back. And so, definitely wouldn't be counting William out here, um, but you definitely got to make sure that you uh, find a way to uh, navigate through this Charizard effectively uh, with the Landorus that's so good at doing so. Uh, but also, while making sure that Zacian that's switching out here uh, is maintained, because that's going to be one of the ways that you need to deal damage in the late game. Absolutely, and speaking of dealing damage, here comes the Dynamax coming out from William's side of the field. Landorus is going to be the Pokemon of choice for that. Uh, probably going to be wanting to get some max airstreams so that you can try and outspeed that Charizard. If you catch a Wildfire going into what was the Zacian, you would get the speed advantage in that point, and then you maybe you'd be able to go for some Rock Falls to KO the Charizard. It'd be quite dangerous to go for it now, because given the fact that it's the weakness policy one, it probably got some bulk behind it as well. Uh, max airstream is going to be fired off. Uh, by that Charizard, we saw in that second game how little it does, and still just doing absolutely nothing. Uh, so Landorus does not care about that in the slightest. Is it going to respond in kind with the Max Airstream? Uh, we'll have to wait and see, because that Incineroar is still going to be outspeeding. Didn't need the Max Airstream to be able to do that. We saw that interaction at uh, the first turn of this game. Uh, but Incineroar is still going to be switching out here. Uh, you can switch into either the Groudon to get the Solar Power Boost going to make your Charizard even stronger, or you can pretty freely switch into the Gastron. There's not much threatening it at this point. If Max Quake goes into it, then you're just still ignoring this Charizard. So uh, Max Airstring is the move of choice. Going into it is going to be the Charizard here. Uh, so not committing to the Max Rock Pool to try and get the knockout because it may not have done so, especially after the parting shot. You don't want to activate that weakness policy because then that Charizard still becomes a little bit manageable. Yeah, it does. And, and you know, now we've got the opportunity for uh, Papon to switch in the Intimidate as well. So even in this position, it's sort of questionable whether or not a uh, Max Rockfall would be able to knock it out, but I think now that the Charizard's gone out of its Gigantamax form and into its normal form, uh, it, it's going to be pretty clear that the Max Rockfall is going to be able to pick up the knockout. So uh, now you're in a place where I, th I think the Rotom's probably done its job uh, for the turn, but it's still got a little bit of work left to do in, uh, in as much that it needs to be able to switch out and reset some Intimidate. So, you know, as soon as William down to one Pokemon left, uh, the Incineroar on Papon's side of the field just looks really, really good. 
Yeah, absolutely would. Thunderbolt fired off into a protecting Charizard here. Uh, so not going to be taking any damage there. And you do need to be doing some da damage to this Gastrodon. Max Quake would be a way through it. So that's respectable damage to the Gastron. Just yeah, under half damage. Uh, so you do need to be getting that damage down. If you've got Play Rough on Zashin, that might put the Gastron in range at this point. Uh, but yep. Gastron able to survive getting the Yawn into the opposing Landorus. So if it does choose to make use of its final turn of Dynamax, it will be going to sleep after that. Yeah, and I think this is quite quite nice, actually, from uh, William's side of the field, because, uh, you know, getting that special defense boost onto the Rotom, I think will be really quite important in front of this Charizard, especially since you know that you're likely going to be knocking it out in one. You don't mind switching in and out too much, I don't think, in, uh, in William's position, especially uh, because that Rotom was able to uh, you know, fire off a nice, uh, nice thunderbolt into the Charizard slot, and we know from previous damage that the Charizard will likely be knocked out by that. So, uh, you know, Papon's going to take advantage of the damage that they can do in this turn. Uh, maybe get a little bit of a boost from Ancient Power that we know is on the Charizard because we've seen that Max Rock Ball. Um, but in the meantime, you know, William has the opportunity to just. Do a little bit of pivoting around and and making sure that uh, you know they can uh, get into a place where Zacian can just keep taking knockouts. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Not switching in the Zacian here doesn't want to take any of the blast burns that are coming out from the Charizard. You can see the impact of that Max Quake boost. Ancient Power. It's not in the sun. It's really not doing much damage at all. That critical hit Thunderbolt responding into that Charizard probably does not matter. There, we saw how much damage the Thunderbolt did in that previous game. Here comes the Max Airstream making use of the final turn of Dynamax. Bring the nice. Gastron down for about a third of its HP. So that's got to be in range of the Zacian waiting in the back. Uh, the Rotom definitely won't be able to break through it. It runs Thunderbolt, which is immune to an overheat, which does nothing. So uh, it's going to take a yawn on the Rotom as well now. So you've got a sleeping Landorus at this point, And the Rotom has to switch out if it doesn't want to go sleep. But that would be switching into the Zacian, which could be coming in on either an Incineroar that could be switching in. It could be the Groudon coming in the field as well. Uh, you could very easily just go for a Precipice Blades if you go with the Groudon. Because then either the Rotom goes to sleep or you catch the Zashian. So uh, it's a yep. somewhat of a pinned position at this point, especially because Will chose to use the last turn of Dynamax and has fallen asleep with the Landorus. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it's, it's a difficult position regardless, right? Because, you know, you, you want the uh, you want the ability for your Zashian to come in unencumbered and without that Intimidate that's on the field that's come in from that Incineroar. Uh, and now you don't really get the opportunity to do that without risk. Um, William's sort of got a got a choice to make, as you said, about whether to attack or, or go to sleep. And I think I, I, I am wondering whether or not it's it's better for William to actually take the sleep turns, especially with how healthy that Landorus is at the moment, um, and just sort of wait for the opportunity for uh, the Zacian to come in cleanly. It's just hard switching in here instead. That Rotom is going to sleep at the end of this turn. Uh, the Landorus did choose to switch out, probably wanting to preserve the Intimidates, which you can still do if it's asleep. Uh, Thunderbolt is going to be the move of choice coming out from that Rotom, doing some very good damage to that opposing Incineroar. That's a Paralysis as well coming out, that secondary effect. Uh, very nice. The Rope Shop was the move of choice into the Landorus, though. That was a Flare Blitz. That would have done some massive damage. And really, really focusing down on this Landorus with the Ice Beam as well. That would have surely knocked out the Landorus if it would have stayed in. Uh, but you could have potentially covered for that Zashin switching with the Flare Blitz, but instead the Rope Shop not doing much damage here. You're paralyzing the Incineroar. Zashin has made it in for free. Yeah, and this is, this is quite clever, actually, coming out from William, because you know that in front of most of the Pokemon on uh, Papon's side of the field that the Rotom is not really going to be too threatened, uh, especially with the Intimidate support coming out from the uh, the Landorus in the back where you need it. Uh, and now the Zacian came in on that double target, which was really, really nice. If Incineroar had chosen to go for a Flare Blitz into that slot, it was a bit of a risk because I uh, think hey, that would have done quite a lot more damage to the Zacian. But, uh, you know, I think Papon didn't want to break the Focus Sash and decided to opt for the move, which didn't do any recoil. Uh, so, really nice switch there for William, and, and that Zacian is looking like it's in a pretty nice position. Yeah, it's, it's got to effect, effectively 1v3 this game at this point, because the Landorus and Rotom were asleep. Rotom chose to switch out, so it hasn't taken a mandatory turn, mandatory turn asleep yet. Uh, the Landorus didn't either, so 
Uh, it's just going to be rotating in the Intimidates, which wasn't impactful here. The Incineroar did switch out into the Groudon, so that Intimidate is a bit wasted, and that was a potential turn to be getting a turn of sleep used up. And then you'd have had the Intimidate waiting in the back. Gastron goes for a Protect here. Uh, Sacred Sword was fired off into that opposing Gastron. That would have surely been in range at that point. Uh, but now it's getting a little bit of extra leftovers recovery, and you've now got Incineroar waiting in the back that could Intimidate the Zashin. That should allow the Gastron to survive that Sacred Sword. It should, and, and now you know for sure, at least, that the, the Gastrodon has uh, has access to Ice Beam. Uh, you know, that Landorus is not going to be wanting to stick around uh, to get it, but that also means that the uh, Zacian is going to be kept on the field under under threat, and it has to do quite a lot of work. So, uh, you know, again, you know, more choices to make if you're William as to which Pokemon you preserve for the final turns. Yeah, it's going to be preserving the Zashin here. Rotom still asleep, still switching in on this Fire Punch. It's able to survive at least, uh, but you need to start burning the turns of sleep here. Landris is using its mandatory one, but it's going to have to take an Ice Beam on the on the uh, for its troubles as well. But of course, oh it's a Soul God. Vest. It's so bulky. Of course, it's going to survive that <laughs> one. one bit we care. Uh, so yeah, surviving the Ice Beam. And now it has the potential of maybe doing something, but we've seen that the Groudon still outspeeds that Landorus. So if it just goes for a Fire Punch into that Landorus, it still won't be able to wake up. Rotom's guaranteed to stay asleep and probably in range of Ice Beam as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why we expected anything different from that Landorus <laughs> at this stage of the game, as it does indeed switch out for the Zacian, preserving itself for the Intimidate for the next turn. Uh, Zacian getting, of course, its Intrepid Sword boost, which it'll probably be losing in some subsequent turns to that Incineroar in the back. Fire Punch going into the Zacian on the switch in. Papon correctly calling that the Landorus was going to be going out, or maybe just covering for the options that William had available to him. Ice Beam follow-up, we don't know if that targeted into the Landorus as well, but it does land onto the Rotom and it will be going down as well. So the Groudon, Incineroar and Gastrodon uh, versus the uh, Landorus in the back, which has taken only one turn of sleep, so isn't guaranteed yet to wake up. I don't think it matters at this point. We've seen that because of all that amazing bolt that it has, it underspeeds the Groudon. So Groudon uh, was very safe to just go for Fire Punch into the Landorus that turn. You know it's Assault Vest, it can't protect, it was guaranteed. And then Ice Beam was enough to pick up the Rotom, so just incredibly safe Fire Punch. It catches the Zashian for good measure as well. And now you just get to click Fire Punch and Ice Beam, and you do take the game here for Thailand 2 and 1. Wow. What, what a game. What an absolute Okay, because you, you you look at these matchups and you look at the the team that uh, Papon was running, Rinya Sun. You know, okay, everybody everybody knows about Rinya Sun. Everybody's played some sort of composition of it, so we all know what what it has available to it. But it really does come down to those team building choices. When you look at the matchup with Rinya Sun versus what William had brought to that match, it kind of doesn't look like the Rinya Sun team has many options to make its way through that game, right? You've got the you've got the Landorus, which as we saw was just insane. Um, you've got the Rotom, you've got the Regilecki option as well, which can suppress the uh, Charizard. Uh, and, and you've got some supporting cast there that, that really do help the match. So really, really well played to uh, Papod there, he's absolutely smashed this game, uh, played so, so well. A little bit unfortunate for William if that uh, that was a timeout from that fake out um, in the game, but how much of a difference it would have made given how strong the end game was for Papon there, I'm not completely sure. We'll, we'll never know, unfortunately, but uh, what a way for Thailand to take it to 2-1. Yeah, absolutely. Some fantastic sets coming out so far. All of these three games so far that we've seen have just been absolutely amazing. And we're going to, of course, have some more fantastic games coming up for you. Uh, that is from our side, from mine and Ben's. That is going to be it for us. Uh, but we can very much take solace in the fact that we officially now never have to see Rinya Sun again. So we are going to be jumping to a very short break <laughs> and then we'll be throwing it over to our other casters.